Greetings, unsettled souls. Go! This is Sam I B. the game, the curator and founder of The Correct Views. Uh, coming at you live here with the Dunce Cow for the month of work. Um, you know, I, sometimes I think the absolute funniest stories are the ones which come up in day-to-day -day life. So as we're starting the show and uh, people are just finding it, let, let me start you with this one. So I was delivering something to someone's house and uh, this particular someone had requested no contact delivery, contactless delivery. When I went to this very intelligent. You can tell they're intelligent because I'm opening the Dunce Cow of the Month Award show with them. This very intelligent person lived in a housing development that was as confusing as a Skinner box to a new rat. So when I arrived, I didn't want them to wait. I called on the phone and I said, uh, I'm not sure the layout of this particular complex. Could you, you know, let me know which one is yours? She proceeds to say, Well, I ordered contactless delivery. That means you ain't supposed to contact me. You know, it is possible that people it can, will, and are so unbelievably dumb that they don't even warrant an answer. That was what I did in this case. I simply didn't even answer the question. And I, I just, I simply went on. Really. And I mentioned this, and I, I know it sounds silly, and I know we laugh at it, and I know we giggle, but there is a reason why I do the Dunce Cap of the Month Award Show. Friends, do you realize that we live in the stupidest time period that we have ever known? Do you understand that? To the extent that we can't understand that contactless delivery has to do with contacting someone in reference to this virus, which almost everyone lives from, contacting you on the phone to find out where the hell you live. These are the people who are voting. These are the people who have opinions on very important things in our society, in our world. These people are interacting and, uh, and they have a say and a voice in everything that goes on. And you can watch the mental state of everyone just huge nosedive all around us. And that, more than anything, is why I do these shows. So, uh, without, uh, with, uh, now that you've heard my personal story about the contactless delivery, let me know what you think about that in the comment line. Check out this. Daily Mail. Now, this guy, he would have gotten major, major props and points from me for reverse uh, racism points here. Black Scooby-Doo burglar wore life-like white mask, complete with fake hair and glasses, uh, to commit 30 burglaries. Now, at first I thought it was really cool. I was like, oh, this is awesome. But uh, it said, uh, what, what, what did the police say? It was odd this burglar's mouth was always open when seen in video surveillance. <laughs> Rather than go white face, which I would have thought was cool, there, there's an image of what this genius did behind me here on Fact Cam. That is the mask. Look at this! I'm sorry! He, he looks like Michael Myers. I can't play much, they'll flag it. He looks like freaking Michael Myers. This is what he was going to rob places in dressed as a white person. Now, I have a feeling that he wasn't trying to look like a white person. I think that's what Daily Mail did, just to fish for hits. But in any event, it is interesting to start to show off with it. Uh, they get worse. They get dumber as we go. You know how that, how that works with this show. Uh, Breitbart report. Athletes told to 
be quiet about trans weightlifter ahead of the Olympic qualification. Now, this goes back to what I was saying about uh, horrible, just endless stupidity. Wouldn't you think that that was a prank? I mean, using the thinking part of your brain, wouldn't wouldn't you think that that, that was a prank? That, that, that was a Saturday Night Live skit or something? Nope. A former Olympic weightlifter claims that female athletes are being told to be quiet about transgender weightlifter Laurel Hubbard ahead of his Olympic debut. Now, I know that there may be some people that find this controversial, but I, I, you know, I'd say follow the science. I, I like to follow the science, and it's pretty straightforward. In most instances, unless you are one of the extremely rare number of people who are born as a hermaphrodite, and even then those nuances aren't as uh, argumentative as people would say, for most people, if you are born male, you're male. And if you're not, if you don't have a schmeckle, then you're female. You can't change this with surgery. You can't change this by forcing what other people are allowed to say. And if you choose to go ahead and cut something off or add something on, that's perfectly up to you. But you will still be, biologically speaking, a mutilated form of whatever sex you originally were. In other words, if you cut off your schmeckle, as uh, Michael Savage says, then all for your right to do so. But that doesn't make you a woman. You're now a mutilated man. And you can prove this by the science of the DNA. These people aren't using science for all of their talk about following the science. They, they're not using the science. Instead, what they're using is feelings, and they're allowing feelings to dictate what um, what a person's gender is. And I've told this story on air before, but I, it's, it bears repeating. Um, when I was a child, uh, how many of you remember, there were like three, five, and eight, I think, you could buy the Star Channel. There was the Dukes of Hazzard, Hulk Hogan, Wonder Woman. They were all on right in a row, I believe. And for a while, I used to try to draw stars on my head to be Wonder Woman. My mother would erase them and say, Oh, it's fine to pretend, honey, but you're not a woman. You, you could be Superman, but you're not going to make a very good Wonder Woman. She didn't say, Oh, I think you're a woman. Oh, I think you want to be a woman. She didn't brainwash me. She simply realized that I was a child who also would sometimes paint himself green, who thought that he could jump rivers in the, uh, Jake, in the Robert E. Lee. Come on, come on now. When you get away from simple common sense parenting, which my mother displayed, and you move into these areas where feelings, some dysmorphia that you have regarding, like for instance, I hate the fact that I'm chubby. I, Always hated it. Always hated it. Just because I feel thin, I, I feel malnourished, or something, I feel like a, a size 28 waist, that doesn't change the fact that I'm a 34 or 36 inch waist. Doesn't change the fact that I weigh about 190 pounds. Whether I like it or not, it, it, it's irrelevant as to whether or not I like it. It doesn't matter whether this idiot feels like a woman the biological fact is that he is male. And if you do not agree with that, then that's how you end up on the Dutch Cap of the Month Award Show, because you're wrong. A former, uh, Hubbard is a, excuse me, a 43-year-old biological male, as we just uh, explained what that means, as if we had to. He's competing as a woman. Should Hubbard pass the New Zealand Olympic Committee... Fitness and performance standards, he would become the first trans athlete to compete in the Olympics. In other words, cheating. Cheating women. And there's kind of a theme here. The, the cheating women thing ends up actually being a theme to this show. And we're, we're, you'll see why when you stay with it. <coughs> Tracy Lambrex, a former Olympic weightlifter from New Zealand, expressed disappointment at the prospect of Hubbard taking away the opportunity to compete from women. I'm quite disappointed, 
quite disappointed for the female athlete who will lose out on that spot, Lambricks told TVNZ. Well, that's what we've been, that's what those of us on the common sense side of this have been warning forever. We're all about equality for women in sport, but right now that equality is being taken away from us. It's being taken away from us because you've embraced an ideology which is full of pseudo bulk science and feelings. I've had female weightlifters come up to me and say, what do we do? This isn't fair. What do we, or this isn't fair. What do we do? Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do because every time we voice it, we get told to be quiet. Uh, this idiot has been eligible to compete in the Olympics since 2015 when the International Olympic Committee issued guidelines allowing any transgender athlete to compete as a woman, provided that their testosterone levels are below 10 nanomoles per liter for at least 12 months before the competition. That is ridiculous. That's like saying that as long as they test negative for cocaine, then the fact that they might have PCP, heroin, meth in their system, that's fine. Doesn't it doesn't break any rules, as long as there's no coke there. To say that testosterone levels are the only thing that gives a male, a biological male, an advantage over a biological female is to make the same ridiculous statement that I just made about the drugs. And that's why you tune in, that's why you hit subscribe, that's why you donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Also, we're going to move on here in a minute. But also, if you are into advertising or if you have a knack for getting uh, shows like this noticed, advertised, uh, put on to other platforms where there's viewership, let me know about that. You can do that as well at the correct views at hotmail.com. Very easy. <clears throat> you can also leave a comment on this video on YouTube. It gets put on many platforms, so I like, I'd rather you email me the correct views at hotmail.com because I'm more likely to see it depending on where this gets shared or posted or when good lord knows all right um msn.com missouri bar responds to outrage after bartender crumples up military id calls it fake um, <clears throat> that's the other thing we have in this country is this obsession i'm not saying we need to have 14 year olds chugging bottles of 151 but what i am saying is this obsession we have with you know, checking IDs and double checking IDs and this, that, or the other because we live in an era where no one can be held accountable for their own actions. Uh, if someone's 18 and they lie about drinking, it shouldn't be up to the bartender to face charges. But since it is, we end up with instances where the staff gets extremely upset and you get dumped instances uh, like you do here. <clears throat> Missouri bar responds to outrage after bartender. All right, the six members of the U.S. military walked into a bar. It's not like a joke. At the Lake of Ozarks in early May, expecting soybeans, but the bartender crumpled up their IDs and told them to get the f out of viral video shows. Noel Cook, who is, is an air in the Air Force, posted a video from the confrontation on Facebook. Writing that he has never been more heated about a non-racial interaction with someone and straight disrespect to fellow service members. Let me call my boys. They have been in freaking uh, effing Afghanistan, he yelled to the group. Dude, you don't even look old enough to know about effing 911. Get the F out of here. Get the F out of my bar. The owner, of course, has stepped back from this, said that they don't want you know that it wasn't what they uh wasn't what they wanted to see happen. Issued an apology, yada, yada, yada. The video was here. It looks like it may have been taken down. I'm not surprised because MSN is a really subpar website to begin with. But anyway, I thought that that was humorous enough to at least make the, uh, the, make the show. But uh, going on to something dumber, where is this? Oh, just, now this, this is awful. This reminds me of what I saw earlier. Um, disgusting... A famous Rio de Janeiro Jesus statue used to push the COVID vaccine, uh, also known as the poisonous poke. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Ernie, uh, Ernie Sanders. Um, 
I saw a disgusting um, hashtag trending earlier, and it was Republican Jesus. And they were pretty much using very, you could tell the people who were typing knew very little about biblical theology, but in any event, they were making references to God and the Republican Party mocking donations, because, of course, Republicans, and this is proven, Republicans in general and conservatives specifically uh, donate to charities of all kinds at a higher rate than liberals and Democrats do, respectively. What if the hashtag had said Republican Muhammad or Democrat Hindu, Democrat Buddha, perhaps? Or is, that, is, that, is it only cool to do this kind of thing if you're doing it against Christians? You know, I'm just trying to keep up here. Because the way I see it, it gets more and more disgusting here by the moment. For some reason, I can't scroll down on their website. I have to know I can do it this way. Something is wrong with the uh, InfoWars website here. Look at that disgusting, disgraceful picture. And again, if you're, if you're going to get the shot, you know, at least study what SM102 is. Study what what a flight what a platelet is. What what happens to you neurologically when this is introduced into the body, and then decide if you want to do it. But don't use Jesus Christ as your uh, as your crutch or as your way to get around in doing your own research. The world-famous Christ the Redeemer statue of Jesus Christ in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, was lit up with a pro-vaccine message this weekend. A projector, it said, displayed the words, Vaccine saves, and the same phrase in Portuguese, Vacina salva, across the statue's torso. In other words, not Jesus saves, the vaccine saves. Now, why do we have the vaccine? It is an absolute, and then people who work in medicine, for those who are willing to take the risk for the vaccine, they're saying that the amount of time it took for us to achieve this is miraculous. Now, that miracle may have happened because of the amount of praying that was done for it. Who knows? Well, Cuomo claims he knows. Cuomo claims that God had no role in it. He mocked those who prayed for a vaccine. Oh, but now, now it's okay to use Jesus Christ as a as a way to get people to go ahead and get the vaccine. This is where the, the Savior wears a mask. Look at this ridiculousness. The Savior wears a mask. This is the guy that heard lepers, you freaking fool. Oh, if I could say what I want to say, but then I won't get shared. What kind of piece of human filth would make something like this? How do you get on the Dunce Cap of the Month award show? You take a disease which kills, oh, what, point one of the elderly, extremely sick, and or obese. And you compare it to a disease like leprosy, where body parts were falling off, and the fatality rate was pretty much 100%. Jesus walked up, touched the leper, and healed him, but yet he's wearing a mask for COVID-19, and that is how you end up on the Dunce Camp of the Month Award Show. Uh, guys, uh, a few things to go. Talk about uh, uh, child abuse and abusing women and young girls. This is what I mean. Crocheted genitals for trans toddlers. Now, following the science, of course, says that there is no trans child. That trans... Being a trans child is something that is pushed onto them in much the same way that my mother could have convinced me that I was gay because I was a fan of comic books. Um, this is child abuse. If you do this to your kid, and I'm not in favor of CPS getting involved. That's not what I'm saying because they, they cause as much harm as they do, uh, good, perhaps more. But this is child abuse, and if you do this to your kid, then there should be some serious, there should be some eyes on your parenting. This is child abuse. And it's funny, because I've always wanted to be a parent. I would love to be a daddy. 
probably never get to. But I, I, I just imagine these people, they do this to their children because and deep down they know it's, it's wrong. Deep down they know that it is wrong. The reason why they're doing it is because it makes them feel like they're accomplishing something by feeding into this agenda. What do I mean by that? I mean that it's one of the problems that drugs have. One of the problems drugs have is the fact that it makes the user feel good, as in they feel like they feel like they would if they've accomplished something, if they've uh, won a marathon or uh, won a Grammy or something. It gives them that push in their brain that makes them feel like they've accomplished something, when in reality they've done nothing at all. Following these movements and these, these stupid ideas with pseudoscience, following in on this makes them feel like they have accomplished something without having to do anything other than virtual, vir, uh, virtual signals. Any time that, it doesn't matter what it is, if the high, that, please pay attention to this, if the high that you get is, is exhilarating, but you haven't accomplished anything, then you're not doing anything to move things in a positive direction, and you're, you haven't accomplished anything. You're just latching on to something because you can't accomplish anything. It, it, it is that cut and dry, unfortunately, and I think if more people would see this and say, yeah, you know what, maybe I do follow this team obsessively, because when they win, I feel like I won. Even when I didn't. You'll find that with drugs. You'll find that with a lot of different things. And the, the, these cycles, sick movements is one of them. To the reasons America is overdue for the reward Sodom and Gomorrah received, it says we can now add crocheted genitals for small children whose parents are grooming them, and that would be abusing them to be transsexual. The Bitty Bug Soft Pecker, Packer, according to the Stitch Bug Studio, which sells the pattern for a soft packer, is for use by trans and non-binary folks and, or for an anatomical model. Bethany Amborn, who should be called up on child abuse charges, who designed the virtual pattern, said that she came across the idea for the Bitty Bug which is essentially designed for younger children, when she was looking for a pattern to make a soft packer for herself. Because she herself can't seem to accept the fact that she's female, whether she likes it or not. She's female. There's nothing she can do about it. She's female. Sizes go from one inch. It's go down to one inch. It's never too early to start molding a child into a trophy transsexual. Look at that. You mean to tell me that's not child abuse? By grooming their children to be sexually deranged from the time that they are toddlers, moon bats can guarantee they won't grow up normal and healthy, which could lead to them voting Republican. Losing the culture war to liberals here is not an option. When you do this to your children, you are creating a issue in their mind and that is as bad as if they were raped without the forced trauma from rape. But the misconception of basic biological truths are just as messed up in a child when you do that to them. ABC7 Chicago dot com runner up the runner-up, the runner-up, the runner-up, Mayor Lightfoot, only granting interviews to reporters of color ahead of the second anniversary. This woman is a disgrace to Maslin, Ohio, where she is from. I'm in Canton, Ohio right now. She is about a 10-minute drive. She was born in Maslin. And for one thing, she's gay, and she loves to talk about being gay. Oh my god, I'm gay, I'm gay. I want you to know I'm gay. Did I mention I'm gay? Guess what, I'm gay. And I might have mentioned that I'm freaking gay. And, of course, we're supposed to care. I, I don't care if she likes sausage or carpet. It makes it no difference to me whatsoever. But 
I can't imagine anybody of any sexual preference wanting to be with her. She looks like an animated hot dog. She's the most frightening thing I've ever seen. But um, this troll now has proved not only is she, uh, but did I mention she might be gay? That she's gay. Did I mention she's gay? She's gay. Um, not only is she gay, but um, she's a bigot. On the eve of her second anniversary as uh, Chicago Mayor, Mayor Lori Lightfoot seized the opportunity to raise the issue of diversity by only giving interviews to reporters of color. Now, nothing says that you want to be diverse, like not being diverse. That's how you end up on the Dunce Cap of the Month award show as a runner-up, no less. Lightfoot has made equity and inclusion a major focus of her first two years in office. Oh yeah, I'm sure she has, by excluding people. See, the idea of inclusion means exclusion. They always say the opposite of what they mean. This is what Karl Marx told them to do in the Communist Manifesto, and it's what they're doing. You can look that up in the Communist Manifesto, and you will see that I'm right. That's why you subscribe to the correct views. Deciding to take aim at the media, she said she has been struck by an overwhelming whiteness and maleness in the press room. Now, what's funny is there probably isn't anybody who really has much of a reason to want to show up anyway. So this is probably one way to save face from ever shrinking press corps as well. Because unless somebody shoots each other, they never want to ask her anything at all anyway. When we're looking at the Black Lives Matter movement and inequality in all of these other places, the news media has no choice but to look at itself in this situation. 